so that we can share it with our friends after. Um, so to get us started, um, I wanted to hear an update on everybody's plants, on everyone's seeds. Molly, you want to go first? Tell me how your seeds are doing. My are actually sprouting. Are they? Oh my Which gosh. Which is sprouting? I don't know. What's the K for? Kale. Kale. My kale is sprouting. Your kale is sprouting. That's awesome. How did that feel to see it sprouting? Oh, my mommy told me I did not see it sprouting. Oh, she told you? you? you think about how you felt after you, when you first noticed it. Were you excited when I showed it to you? <laughs> You're so sweet. <laughs> You're funny, Molly. Uh, okay, Kira, how are your seeds doing? Some of them are growing. Are they? Yeah. Do you know which ones? Some of the kale and some tomatoes. <gasps> That's so exciting. Aren't they so cute? The little baby little sprouts coming up. Yeah. They're so tiny, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And have you noticed? Hi, Naomi. Hi, Naomi. Have you noticed Hi. that when you are watering them, how gentle you need to be with your spray? Because they aren't very mm -hmm. strong yet, are they? No. No. Um, sorry, I just had someone message me. Just one second. Uh, awesome. Okay, Vanessa, did you have anything sprout for you? Yeah, most um, had either the tomatoes or peppers sprouted first, but um, my ink has come off, so I don't know who they are. <laughs> um, yes. And then I squished my chamomile. It came up, um, but I had a lid on it, and um, I noticed that some of them were bent this morning, so the lid is now off. I'm hoping that they might be able to recover, but at least the ones that sprouted up can stay strong. <laughs> yeah, they should be able to recover, no problem. I know um, I, I can actually show all of you today an update on some of the seeds I started a few weeks before the course, so you can see what you have to look forward to. But um, I had to do some switching around because my little greenhouse plastic dome was too short for my tomatoes and they were starting to feel crowded and I just moved them around and they, they sorted it out. They're pretty resilient. So as long as you just kind of like step back and yeah. <laughs> leave them alone, they should be okay. Good. That's good to hear. Um, Deanna? Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Yeah, I had... Sprout for you? Had, um, mm -hmm, we have um, kale and the chamomile and what else have I seen? Um, what else did we do with it was plants? Or sorry, that was flowers. I wrote um, it down. Lemon balm, tomatoes. Oh, maybe it's the lemon balm. Yeah, maybe it's the lemon balm that's coming up. This is... I guess, I guess we haven't planted. Yeah, we haven't yeah, planted. this is the lemon balm. So, so teeny tiny. Oh, My lemon so balm fun. took quite a while to come up, actually. And I was like, oh, I, I don't know if these guys are going to come up for me, but I was patient and I kept watering <laughs> and here they are. So yeah, we don't have the best light in this little place, but the everything's, I mean, kale seems to be always the first to, to pop up. So I think it'll do okay. <laughs> yeah, the kale is very resilient. It's very hardy and mm -hmm. uh, it also can take a few frosts. So even if you accidentally put it outside a little too early, it will be okay. And awesome. it will last you right until October, likely, and it will really yeah. help for you. Yeah. yeah, that's a good crop. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Um, Lydia, did you have anything sprout for you guys yet? Hi. Yes, I'm on my front porch, so they may or may not come in and out. 
<laughs> so we've had these um, on our kitchen ledge above the sink on the window. And um, yeah, we've had some good sprouts. I, I did a couple things uh, in, incorrectly, but it's going to be a happy mistake. I'm just not sure how to go forward. But anyway, <laughs> we've, had, we've had the kale sprout up. There's the kale is really good. And the, what is this? The chamomile is looking Ooh, look at those. cute. And the tomato just exploded this week. So there's our tomatoes. Uh, the peppers, we have like the like most minuscule little green item coming up, like little tiny sprout. And the lemon balm we have, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but we do have some little sprouts in there. Um, and I, I got overly ambitious and I did plant, but not all of them, so I do have more, but I got a little ambitious and I did plant the amaranth. Yeah. yeah. So I have a, a, some skinny, tiny little sprouts in there and these are the morning glory. But again, I have some left over to plant in the ground. Um, but I thought, oh, I'll just plant them in here. Yeah. And you can also, yeah. Um, and you can tell I'm a beginner, and I guess this is my question now to the people who know what they're doing, but I just planted all the tomato seeds in here and all the kale in there. Yeah. And all the, like, I didn't spread it out maybe as much as um, should have been. So I don't know if I can split these. Yeah, we're going to be doing Okay. We're going to be doing some thinning of plants um, once they get a little bit hardier. So when typically, once your plants have two to three leaves on the stem, that's when they're kind of hard enough to split apart. So this okay. is a very, very delicate process um, that, uh, if I'm going to be honest, it's not my favorite to do. Uh, it's, it's kind of, I get intimidated by it because they're just, I don't want to disrupt them because they're always doing yeah. so well, but they'll end up crowding each other out. So we will definitely do that together. Um, and I'll show you, you know, how to gently do it. Um, so yeah, your tomatoes, you're going to want to tear apart. Your kale might be okay. Um, if you just give it the space to grow out outwards, it, it might be okay not to split up, but um, yeah, everything's looking great. It looks like you're getting lots of sunlight wherever you are. Um, and uh, my mom actually started her amaranth and it looks great as well. So if you guys want, we can, we, you can go ahead and plant that. Um, I can share the planting um, directions uh, in the chat of our group, um, or we can do it together next week. It's, it's up to you. I know I wanted to get some more plants started here. I have a little like growing operation in my bedroom here. Um, and the neighbors have even stopped by to be like, what are you growing? <laughs> because they can see the lights <laughs> from down the road. It's so funny. Um, so yeah, I'm just like getting that spring itch too. And I just want to plant all the, all the seeds. Um, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Lydia. It's so nice to see you guys. Hello. Happy weekend. Okay, and Molly is joining us as well. Hi, Molly. Molly just had a baby, and I, I am just, just the most beautiful baby. She literally had the baby, I think, the day we started, right? Yeah. <laughs> so awesome. So we are so happy to have you here. Thank you so much for taking this yeah. time. Um, I just shared the video today of the, the planting seeds. So um, if you get a chance um, and you need to ask us any questions, by all means, uh, message me at any time. Um, and it looks like most of the seeds only took about a week to come up. Um, most of them said it was like 10 to 14 days, but they all came up in a week. So it looks like everybody's doing a great job um, taking really good care of their plants. Um, and so, yeah, this is, this is Molly. Um, you're, you're in BC, right, Molly? Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think the rest of the group is from all, all over Ontario and then Molly's from BC. So it'll be interesting to see um, how we can support with the different growing climate um, and what that will look like with your garden. So we'll, we'll be experimenting with that. Awesome. Okay. So today we are going to be talking about the medicine wheel. 
And the medicine wheel is a really, really important tool that we can all use for many, many different things. So we're gonna, we're gonna learn about the medicine wheel and then we are going to fill in our own medicine wheels in our garden journals together. Okay, so you can either write down the questions or you can come and watch this again later and take some time to think about it or you can do it as we go. It's completely up to you. Um, but I was really, really excited about this week's class because the medicine wheel is gonna be super important for us um, as we go through this um, journey together. So earlier on in the week, I shared this document, this picture of the medicine wheel with everybody. So if you didn't get a chance to look at it, that's okay. We're gonna go through it together. And I wanted to just do a little bit of explaining of what the medicine wheel is before we go into talking about some of these questions. So before we get started, has anybody seen the medicine wheel before? Yeah, thumbs up if you've seen the medicine wheel before. Awesome, that's great. And does anybody want to share what they know about the medicine wheel? Kira, do you wanna go first, Sunny? Yeah, that medicine wheel, we can do so many different things. That's right. You are very right. There are so many different things that we can learn in each of these sections. Great job. Does anyone else want to share what they know about the medicine wheel? Can't see. I should change it so I can see everyone's videos. Okay, so the medicine wheel, what, what shape is the medicine wheel? You can share that. I know. Sure, Molly, go ahead. It's a circle. It is a circle. And what does a circle mean to us? What do you think the circle means? The circle goes round Ooh, and round yeah. oh. and round, right? Put your hand it in. has no endings and no beginnings. That's right. So remember last week when I was talking about how we are going to be always learning about plants? Even when we're done this course, there's still going to be so much more for us to know about plants, right? So that's kind of like the circle. We're starting at the beginning and we may not know very much, but we're gonna go around the circle and learn more and more and more, and it's never gonna end. We're always gonna be learning, right? So that idea that it never ends applies to almost everything, right? It applies to time, that time is just gonna keep going and going and going, it's never gonna end. It applies to the seasons, right? It's always going to be summer and then fall and then winter and then spring and then it's going to keep going around that circle right that cycle we call that a cycle when things change through the different seasons we also have different stages of our life right when we're born as a baby and then we grow up into a kid or a teenager and then an adult and then what we call an elder, right? When we're older, like maybe our grandparents' age, right? And our grandparents, they know so, so much about everything because they've lived a whole life, right? And we have so much to learn from people who are that age, our elders, because they've lived through and they've seen so much. And after that stage, I like to talk to Mia about how after that stage, we return to the stars right? And our spirit that lives inside, it still exists, right? So it never goes away. It's always, always there. So many different things can live in here. So there are four parts to the medicine wheel, right? As you can see, four different parts. 
and all of the different parts are touching. So what do you think that means, that all the different parts are touching? It's connected. Yes, that's right. They are connected. And that means that every- I told it to her. Yeah, good job. <laughs> you did a great job. That means that every living being on the earth, right? So that means birds and us human beings and plants and animals. We are all, we all rely on one another. That's what the medicine wheel reminds us, right? We all rely on one another. And if we took one of these parts away, everything would fall apart, right? We wouldn't be able to have that really, really strong connection to everyone. So that's really, really important. Okay, and now in each of these sections, there's four different words that are gonna be really, really important to us during this course, okay? The first word is mental, that's at the top. The next one is over to your right, over to, I'm just kidding. <laughs> As we go clockwise around, we have spiritual, the bottom we have physical and the last one is emotional okay so these words are very important now does anybody know what any of these words mean do we know what some of these words are kira do you want to share that they mean that we can stay healthy yes they do when we take care of all of these parts, that means we stay healthy. You're right, great job. How about the word mental? When we talk about taking care of our mental, what does that mean? What does that mean to you? I like to think of it as our brains, right? Our thinking. So if you think about these words in your body, the mental would be up here in your head. So to take care of our mental self, we would want to maybe surround ourselves with people who are kind and who give us love, right? That would make our thoughts be really nice and happy. And if we were having kind of bad thoughts or thoughts that made us sad, what would we do to change those thoughts? What are some of your favorite things to do that might change those thoughts into good thoughts? Say it again. What makes you happy, June, when you're sad? Hugs. Hugs, that's such a good one. Good job. Yes, hugs. That's a great example. Are there some other favorite things that our friends have? Yeah, Lydia. You want to share? Um, talking to someone you love. Yeah, talking to someone you love. That's so important to make sure that you feel connected and loved. That's wonderful. Molly? Make, what makes me from being angry or sad or all good stuff is that make me feel good. That's why I have so many of them, like a hundred. Oh, Mia has a hundred stuffies too. Yeah, sometimes when you get to give those soft stuffies a nice big hug, does that make you feel so good? Yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad you have so many stuffy friends. Kira, how about you, honey? When, when people we love tell us what we want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes it's nice to ask someone you love to help you through some of those feelings, right? Yeah, great job. Okay, so we've got some really good examples of some of our favorite things we like to do to help our mental selves. So what I'd like you to do is in your garden journals, when you have a chance, 
you have a picture of the medicine wheel in there. Okay, and it's blank. So what you can do is in the top, you can use this um, example for your letters and you can write mental at the top. And then I want you to either write words or draw pictures of some of the favorite things that you have that make you feel really good in that mental space, okay? So that's what you're gonna do in there. You can use whatever colors or shapes that make, that make you feel good. Okay, the next one is spiritual. What do we think about spiritual? What does spiritual mean? Another word for spiritual that might help you is also energy. Kira, you wanna try? It's when you get lots of energy in you. Yes, that's a really good way to describe it. Yes. Where do you think our spirit lives? In our bodies. Molly? In our body. Where in your body, Jess? Tummy, I think. In your tummy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really, you know what? You know how I know it lives in my tummy? You know how sometimes you may, um, something might happen and you may be experiencing something and you get that weird feeling in your tummy that's trying to tell you something? Has anyone ever felt that weird feeling in your tummy? Yeah. Yeah. So that feeling, that's your spirit talking to you, right? And telling you whether it's a good thing to do or a safe thing to do, or if it's not a safe thing to do, right? Or maybe not a good thing for you to do. And so it's really important that we listen to that feeling in our tummy and we talk to our parents about those feelings, right? So that if you're ever feeling uneasy or, you know, your tummy hurts because you're thinking about something, that's your spirit reminding you that it's there and keeping you really centered to who you are. And so that's really, really important. And it's something that as adults, we don't always listen to that feeling in our tummy as much as we should. But as kids, you guys are so good at it. And so I want you to hang on to that as long as possible and remind us, remind your parents too. So whenever you're feeling that feeling in your tummy or maybe that, that energy, right, in your tummy, what are some things, what are some of your favorite things to do to make you feel that good, good energy? Kira? When I go outside. Yes, being outside is such a great place to listen to your spirit. And also, it allows us to kind of experience or meet the spirits of other beings as well, right? So sometimes I know one thing that I've really been noticing lately because it's been such a long winter is that the sun is starting to feel warm again on my face, right? So when we go outside, we haven't felt that in a while. When we go outside and we just close our eyes and let the sun shine on our face and it's all warm, doesn't that make you feel so good? Yeah, because we miss the sun. And that is the spirit of the sun that brings us warmth and happiness, right? And so that's how we know it's the spirit of the sun. And then your spirit is communicating, is talking to the spirit of the sun in that way. Does anyone have any other examples of things they like to do? Kira likes to go outside to make her, her spirit feel good. What other things do we like to do? Music oh, is one for me. I like to play and read books. Oh yes, that is really great. And sometimes when we read books, it helps us with our imagination, right? Yeah. yeah that's awesome. Great example. 
Any other examples of what makes our spirits feel good? Go ahead, Violet. Um, sometimes you can, okay, I forgot. <laughs> Being kind and helping people with boo boos. Being kind and helping people with their boo boos. With their boo -boos. <laughs> yes. No, that is a great example. And that tells me that your spirit, you have a helper spirit. Yeah. And I think you're going to be a great helper with the plants, right? As you're going to be helping those plants grow and grow and grow. And then when they're finally ready to eat, they're going to help you back. Do you know what we call that? We call it reciprocity. So that's a big word that we can maybe learn more about in the fall. Um, but that is a really important part. Sometimes helping other people makes our spirit feel good, right? Sometimes when we give to others, we actually are filling our own selves up as well. So that's a really, really important um, piece to add. Thank you. Do we have any other ideas? Kira, you wanted to add one more? Playing with my friends. Yeah, playing with your friends, feeling loved and safe, being able to use your imagination. Absolutely, that's very, very important. Okay, so when you get a chance in your garden journals, over in this space here, you're gonna write spiritual and you're gonna draw or write or do any pictures. You could even, if you find things in magazines, if you wanted to cut out pictures from magazines and glue them in there, you could also do that too. In this space for your favorite things to help you feel your best spiritual self. Okay, the next one at the bottom is physical. Okay. Now, what, is, what does physical mean? Where do you think that lives in our bodies? Molly, you wanna try uh, this? I'm not really sure, I'm just kind of guessing. Yeah. Uh, can you whisper what it might be? I don't know what the answer is. You do. Well, physical makes you, you said that physical was like when your body moves. Physical health. Like yeah. in gym class. Gym. You got it. Physical is our bodies. That's exactly right. So, you know, when we are moving our bodies and we might be outside playing and we're getting out all that extra energy and it feels so good and the fresh air in our bodies makes us feel so good and also eating good food makes us feel so good. So this is our physical body. It's how we take care of our actual physical body. That's so, so important. So does anybody want to share what they do to take care of their physical body? Some of their favorite things to do? You can say that loud, go ahead. Soccer. Soccer, yeah. That's great exercise. And it's on a team too. So if it's on a team and you're working with other people, do you think it also helps you connect with other parts of the medicine wheel? Yeah. Um, gymnastics. Gymnastics. Oh my gosh, you must be really flexible. Are you flexible? Everyone's legs in my family. Really? Yep. And one time I did it to my other brother, both feet. Wow. Yeah, gymnastics is great for your muscles, right? Really good at stretching your muscles and building your muscles so you're nice and strong. That's awesome. What else do we like to do? Keep your body healthy. What do you like to do? What do you do, baby? In China. She said, go outside and do yoga. <gasps> oh my gosh, I love yoga. You know, maybe we should do a yoga together one week, eh? Wouldn't that be fun? We could do yoga as a group. Maybe outside, we could all go outside. 
That would be so nice. I love yoga too. And yoga is really good for strengthening our, our muscles and being strong in our physical body, but it's also good for our mental as well. I know when I'm feeling like I have too many thoughts going on up here, I like to do some yoga to try and calm those thoughts down, slow those thoughts down. <laughs> um, so that's a great one. Thank you for sharing. Uh, does anyone have any more things they like to do to take care of their physical bodies they'd like to share? Kira? I just have a question. Yes. What's on the left side? Yeah, we're going to go to that one next. That one's next. Do you have a physical, something you like to do to, to take care of your physical self, Kira? I like to relax myself. Oh my gosh, Kira is, she has so much knowledge. Relaxing is so important because if we don't relax and if we don't rest our bodies, we don't have enough energy to go out and play and to learn and to take care of the other parts of ourselves too, like our mental parts and even our spiritual parts. So rest is very, very important. Thank you, Kira. So in our garden journals, we are going to, in the bottom of our medicine wheel, we are going to write or draw or cut out a picture of something or all of our favorite things to do to keep, to take care of our physical selves. Okay, and the last one on the left side is our emotions, our emotional self. Okay, so who can tell me about our emotional self? Where does that live in our body? Where do our emotions live? Molly? They live inside your, you live, they live inside your face. Yes, they definitely can live inside your face. A lot, of, <laughs> that is so accurate. A lot of our emotions show through our face, right? In the different facial expressions that we have. Where else do you think it could live in our bodies? Where do you feel that emotion first in your body? Kira? In your whole body. In your whole body. Some emotions can feel so big that they are in your whole body. I definitely know what you mean, Kira. What kind of emotions are so big that you can feel them in your whole body? Anger? Oh yeah, big time. Yeah. What else? Anger is a big one. Sometimes happiness too, right? Sometimes our whole body feels happy. But emotions start in our heart, right? Our hearts are the ones that, that really feel. That's what helps us feel these different emotions, right? And then those feelings, those emotions often come up to our brain and then our brain has these different thoughts, right? So if we're having happy emotions, we might have happy thoughts. And if we're having sad or angry emotions, we might have sad or angry thoughts, right? So you can see how our emotions and our mental self is connected, right? Because they're also right beside each other. See that? Okay, so when you are having one of those really big full body emotions, what are some things you do to take care of yourself? What are some of your favorite things for our big emotions? Kira looks like she's meditating. Yeah. I'm not very good at meditating. You'll have to teach me, Kira. The emotions are kind of tricky. You can tell them about your code word. You have a code word at school. I have a code word at school. And Which when you have big feelings, what do you say? Tell them. Tell them. Pasta. And then what happens when you say pasta and you have big feelings? I don't know. 
Do they give you some time apart from the group so you can calm down? No. And take you for a little walk I, in the woods? I, I've never said that. I, I don't know that answer. I don't know the answer. That's okay. I but never ever said past that. Okay. Have you ever tried it yet? I don't know. That's okay. I mean, those things that mommy said sound pretty good. I mean, if I was feeling, you know, some big emotions, I might like to have some time alone, right? Or maybe a hug from a stuffy or a walk alone in the woods. That sounds lovely. I think that would really help my emotions. And alone time is, is important, right? Sometimes we need to have that alone time so that we have the quiet and so that our bodies can relax and our emotions can relax and we can just focus on what we need as people. Did anyone have anything else? Oh, Kira, did you want to share? Also breathing. Mm -hmm. Yep, big deep breaths. That's a great, great example. So in our last part of our journal, we're going to put it in this section. We're going to put our emotions. And they're going to live right in here, your pictures and your words and all of those things, okay? And then at the end, you are going to see that you have a full circle with all of these different ways that you can stay balanced, okay? So, let's make sure that I got all of this here that I wanted to say. Okay, yeah, so my last question for you is when we were talking about our medicine wheel and the different parts of the medicine wheel, right? So the mental, spiritual, physical, emotional, was there one part that you felt that was completely in balance, was really in a good place? If you were to pick one that felt the best for you, which section would you pick? Kira? The top. The top one? The top? Yeah. Your, yeah, your thoughts. That's great. Okay. So maybe this week you might want to spend some time exploring some of the ways that you can bring your spiritual, physical, and emotional self in balance with your mental, right? It sounds like you're doing just the right amount of things for your mental space. And maybe just exploring the other three might be something you wanna look into this week. Anyone else wanna share? Which one seems to be the most imbalance for you today? Molly? Um, the one that it's not balanced, no, uncomfortable. Which one's not feeling good? Physical's not feeling good right now. Okay, okay. So, are there things you're gonna do maybe today or tomorrow to get yourself back into physical balance? What can you do to help your body? That's feeling, sweetie. That's not a body thing. So, could you maybe we need to run around the backyard a little bit? Okay, we'll figure something out. Yeah, maybe some yoga. Yeah, yoga is good for feelings too. And does anyone else want to share? Mine was um, maybe emotion. Yeah, that well, was good or bad? It's sort of good. Okay, great. I'm sad because in movies, when I see a sad part, I cry. Oh, I know the feeling. Yep. Yeah. So, are there things you're going to do to get that back into balance for yourself? Um, what do you think you could do to help you get your emotional feelings in balance? Maybe just say it's a movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, you could maybe talk about it with someone, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes when we talk about things and, and get them out of our bodies, out of our minds, it makes us feel a lot better. Sometimes it's just as simple as that. 
Okay, did anyone else want to share any final thoughts before we wrap up for today? Does anyone have any questions about the medicine wheel? Anything they wanted to share? I have a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, can you explain the, like the actual, like herbal medicines that are on it? Yeah. And why, like how they fit in each of those areas? We sure can. So these, um, these are the four sacred medicines um, within indigenous culture. So each, I say indigenous culture because each indigenous nation has their own sacred medicines. I would say that um, many, many uh, indigenous nations on Turtle Island would call these four medicines, their four sacred medicines, but they may differ a little bit. Um, and they all have their own kind of purpose and they all are aligned with the different seasons for a reason. So for example, if you look in mental, all of these things kind of align and make sense. So in the mental, you're also in the winter phase, right? Which can be really difficult mentally for us to um, get through as human beings, right? Because we don't have the sun and the summer and all of those things. So it's a time of deep reflection, winter time. And cedar, the medicine that cedar holds is very much a protector and a cleanser. So the medicine that we would use during that time to protect and cleanse us from any negative thoughts um, and really help us through that time. Um, tobacco is in the east. So the sun rises in the east, right? And so that is the, um, the, the eastern door. So there's, there's a very long, beautiful teaching about this. Um, so I won't go into it um, in depth here, but tobacco, um, sacred tobacco is what we offer um, in thanks. So we would offer thanks to the sun for rising. We would offer thanks to plants for their harvests. We would offer um, tobacco to an elder for giving us knowledge. Um, so this, this plant in the east like this is very, very important because it's, it's the beginning um, and it kind of signifies the creator um, and our connection to the creator. Um, sage uh, in the summer, so sage really thrives in the summer in that dry heat. Um, sage is, you're probably familiar with sage, you've probably seen it around uh, what we use for smudging. So, and we can do a smudge here maybe next week so everybody can see um, what that looks like. Um, but white sage typically or buffalo sage, maybe desert sage, depending on where you're from, um, is you know, is also connected to fire in this element as well. Um, and we use that to cleanse our spaces of negative energy. Um, and then sweet grass, sweet grass is harvested late fall, early, or sorry, late summer, early fall. Sweet, sweet grass is considered to be the hair of mother earth. And we braid it together um, and that, signifies a lot of different things. Um, there's a few different teachings about that, um, but mostly I would say um, the, just the interconnectedness um, of teachings and in, in all beings and that we're stronger when we are braided together like that than we are as one particular strand. Um, and so that's how they all kind of connect to one another. And you can really dive into each section and the different layers in each, each section to see how those medicines connect to the seasons, to the elements, and all of those things. Um, and there's definitely some beautiful teachings around that. So I will try and find some because there's some that are um, even on YouTube. Um, so I'll try and find some and share them in our group so that um, if you're interested in learning more, um, you have that resource available. Well, that's super neat um, and makes a lot more sense when you connect it to the seasons. Yeah. My second question is today, I mean, a lot of us celebrate spring today. Is there like a indigenous cult in indigenous culture is there a time of or a day or a significance around like how the seasons change and when would that be celebrated 
Yes, there absolutely is. So we, we, our celebrations, I would say, typically revolve around the moon and mm -hmm. the sun, um, because that was our, that's our calendar, right? Um, so the winter solstice um, would be, you know, when we kind of are hunkering down for the winter and we transition into that winter space and then spring equinox um, is when things start to move into springtime and when the sap starts to run. So March is um, sugar moon. Um, we call it sugar moon because the sap is starting to run and, and that, um, you know, that's when we know the bears are waking up and uh and spring is coming and that's you know how we kind of track when things need to go into the ground and when to hunt um certain things and when the babies are coming and all of those wonderful things so um there is a way and and i think i'm gonna look into this as we start getting things into the ground is we'll plan to plant our outdoor seeds using the lunar calendar. So we can do a little bit of moon gardening as well. Um, because of the phases of the moon and its connection to water, um, it's best to do your planting under a full moon because the water is all up at the surface. And that's when your seeds are gonna get the most support. And then as, as it kind of wanes, it's gonna pull it back down in, right? And those roots are gonna grow. Um, so we can explore that as well um, throughout the course and I'll, uh, I'll make that note for myself to, to plan it accordingly. Cool, thank you. That's yeah. awesome. Any other questions for today? All right. Well, it was so lovely to see all of you. I know that I'm excited to go and um, I think I might look for some pictures and make a little kind of image board in my own medicine wheel. Um, and maybe next week when we all get together, we can share what our medicine wheels look like um, and show our, our bright colors and maybe talk about one way that we have tried to keep all of those four sections into balance. Okay, so we're gonna this week work on one way that we're keeping all of those four sections into balance. And I would like you, when you're feeling unbalanced, right? So if you're having a big emotion or your body's feeling really tired or sore, or maybe you're feeling some weird energy in your tummy, that you stop and take a moment to tell your parents or tell a sibling and then maybe maybe if you feel comfortable sharing what you did to kind of move yourself out of that space using what you recorded today in your medicine wheel okay so think about those two things this week and don't forget to keep your plants nice and watered and in the sun i can feel the sun getting warmer and warmer each day. And we're supposed to have a really, really warm week here. Um, so that's great news for us. Um, and then maybe before you go, I will show you my plants. So my chamomile is doing really well. <clears throat> so this chamomile here, I'll show you. So this at the bottom is the chamomile and this has been in here for, uh, I wrote it down. Uh, it's been in here for a month and a half. Okay, so that's how big it's gonna get and it's great now. Like I could probably, if it was warm enough outside, I could probably just scoop this up and put it right in the ground and it would take right off. And this down here, remember I said I could never grow white sage. Well, it's growing for me and I'm so excited. But again, I'm so scared to transplant this. Um, so I've got some pretty large stalks here and I'm trying to think about where I'm gonna actually plant this because this too will take over. I'm just gonna get my tomatoes. So these are my tomatoes. They're getting so big and I'm gonna have to thin mine up too so we can go through that together they need to be watered and then speaking of tobacco 
these are my little tobacco seeds that um, I started. This is the first time growing traditional tobacco. And there's three different kinds in here. Um, so I'm excited to see how they turn out. One has orange flowers and one has white flowers. Um, so we will see, and they get very, very tall. So we will see how that goes. So good luck with your growing. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to share them with us on the group and um, you know, share your pictures and your discoveries as we go. I love seeing what you're up to. And uh, okay, so I will let you all enjoy the rest of your weekend and the new lesson will should be up uh, tomorrow evening. Say it louder, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Bye. everybody. Bye. 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 Have a good day.